So to start off, I'm gonna use the Gamakatsu B10 Stinger, size two. I typically use a size four, but all I have is size two today, so I'm gonna go with that. I actually do have the size six, but this is too small for the bonefish we catch here. So I'm gonna go for the bigger hook because we catch bigger fish. So I'm actually gonna tie my fly that I pretty much catch everything on. I've caught even brown trout I've caught up in the mountains on this particular fly. It mimics a little shrimp, but it also kind of looks like a little crawfish, so pretty much anything will eat it. So I'm gonna start off with a light pink 210 denier. Start off with my base wrap. You kinda wanna build a little bit of material on there for everything to hang on to. Got my good scissors. Everybody has a good scissors. Everybody has good scissors and bad scissors. Certain things you do with each one. So build up that base wrap a little, kind of lock that thread on. For the tail, I typically use different things, whether it's hackle, soft hackle, or this one, I'm gonna use polar fiber, just to make it more of a shrimp. So you get your tan polar fiber, like so. I mean, I catch everything on this particular fly, but this specific one we're gonna use for bonefish tomorrow. You're gonna to wanna to grab your section of material. This polar fiber is very thin, so you wanna grab more than you typically would of like a fin raccoon, which I typically use a lot of. Here we go, got a little tail. I'm gonna trim it off once it's, uh, I'm, gonna I'm gonna trim it off once I have it on there because it's a little bit long right now, but you wanna lay it on top, get a couple loose wraps two to three, maybe four loose wraps, and then cinch down. So it kind of locks it into place. So I like to trim off some of this uh, bulk up front, just because it's not really necessary. So you kind of build that back up. So now I like to get two silly legs. I'm going with the pink pink silly legs just to keep the color scheme going. I'm gonna break off two from the bunch. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep them still attached for right now. And just lay them flat on the top. Then just give it three or four wraps. Get this, this lean forward and fold it back. So you actually double it over, so now there's four legs going at the bottom. As you can see, got four legs, and I say the bottom, this is the top right now, but when this, this flies in the water, this will be the bottom. Like so. So it looks like little shrimp legs sticking out the bottom. Then you get some flash. In this instance, I'm using gold flash. Doesn't have to be gold, but I like the way this one looks and I have a lot of it, so. And with this, I'm gonna try to mimic the, the antennas that a shrimp have. That's why I like the gold color. You need to lay one piece straight along the shank of the hook. And do the same thing, give it a couple loose turns. Kind of cinch it down. Fold it back over, one on each side of the hook and then work it right back. So as you can see, I mean, it's already starting to look like a shrimp. All right, so then you get one inch tarantula. Yeah, it's a little beat up. It's an old pack I've had for a long time, but it works. This should be enough to do two flies, hopefully, because we're fishing tomorrow, we're gonna eat two flies. So, um, this is tan and the same light baby pink, whatever you want to call it, shrimp pink. I don't know what the proper term is, but oh, the pack says pink and tan. <laughs> pink tan. It's probably out of focus. So actually what I'm gonna do next is not that, I lied. I'm gonna put on some bee chain eyes. I like to go with large bee chain eyes uh, and wide bee chain eyes. Bee chain eyes give a rattle. When you cut it, it leaves the little pieces of metal inside and it actually creates like a little shake. When you strip the line, it rattles, makes noise, and the fish are drawn to it. Um, I see a lot of guys use lead eyes. 
I haven't had much luck with lead eyes because I noticed the fish tend to try to pin the fly into the bottom and they can't get it. When I strip it, it doesn't pop up and give them a chance to eat it. So the bead chain eyes does and the rattle, I feel like the rattle draws their attention a little bit more. So do not use scissors for this. I'm using an old pair of rusty pliers that I found in the shed. And uh, what you wanna do is cut it in. I don't know if you can hear that, but it rattles. So I'm gonna work the thread back up to about the front of the hook. This is where I want the fly to essentially stop. So I'm gonna go ahead and figure eight these on. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I like to do ten wraps on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What you do is you cross them from each other and then you go, I don't know what the proper term for this is, but you're kind of like cinching it down, locking it down into place. And then build a little bit of base in front of the eyes where I will tie my weed guard. So for the weed guard, I'm gonna be using Cortland 50 pound. Um, typically I used to use Hard Mason 16, but this Cortland stuff is super thin that the 50 is actually about the same as the 16 hard mason so i'll be using 50 pound Cortland for this weed guard you're going to cut off about two inches of it and yeah it's some strong stuff that's why i use pliers to cut it kind of want to bend it over into a little u slide it on go in front of it four times slide that down so you have it nice and flat on the base of the hook and then go over the top. This is the way I tie my weed guards. I was taught this way many years ago, so I've just maintained doing it this way. I know there's other ways to do it, single weed guards, double. So again, now I'm going with the pink and tan tarantula. It's from EP, one inch wide. I'm gonna start it off at the back, right where the tail meets the hook shank. Get a few wraps to cinch it on. Work my way back to the eyes. So what you wanna do is get a couple, two, three wraps in the same spot to build some bulk. And every time you, you spin it, you wanna pull the hairs, brush the brush back. You kinda of wanna build it up, bulk it up in the back, have it taper up towards the front. So you see I got two turns in the same spot. I'm gonna slowly start going forward with it. So I'm about five turns overall right now. It depends, the amount of turns, it depends on the pack of tarantula. For whatever reason, some packs have more material attached to the wire than others. Sometimes you can do three turns and be all the way at the front. Sometimes it takes five or six, seven, eight turns. So I work my way up to the eye, as you can see. I'm right at the back, right at the back of the eyes, and I am going to get about four turns to cinch this down. So now that I have that cinched down, I get my bad scissors. Again, you do not want to do this with your good scissors. I'm gonna use this to cut metal wire. So now that I got that on there, I'm gonna come back and get a couple more wraps just to secure it. I'm gonna work my way forward again. While you do this, you wanna keep pulling the little material back. Try to clean it up a bit. So as I go forward, I'm gonna stop it right there. I grab my trusty whip finisher. Not everybody uses a whip finisher. I like it, it makes it a lot easier, for me at least. And you just whip it. Um, I've noticed a lot of people used to tell me not to put glue on my bonefish flies. They said I'd increase my catch rate by not using glue. I've actually found the opposite. I stopped using glue and I stopped catching fish, if that makes any sense. Um, they're just attracted to it, I feel like, because I used to tie my flies 
soak them in glue and go straight to the flat and catch fish on it. So uh, what you want to do now is just kind of pull this out. You want to brush out all the material. As you can see, I'm pulling it away from each other. I kind of want to form that, that little crabby body shape. So I'm going to get my scissors and trim the top flat. This helps ensure that the fly is going to ride hook shank up. So we'll run like this in the water because there's less material on the bottom. The material is what makes it float, what retains air in it when you cast. You want to trim that flat quite a bit, start to brush it back, it starts to take that shape. And then this is just a little too messy for me, so I like to clean it up and taper it a little bit. So again, you just kind of want to, I like to create like a little flat spot on top. This side, you kind of want to taper it up and the sides, I like to taper them as well towards the back. Once it gets in the water, it's just going to push water better and it just gets that shrimpy shape to it. As you can see, then I will now come and trim the legs a little bit. Kind of break them apart, make sure they're the same length. That gives me my little four shrimp legs. Um, the antennas are got to be trimmed a little bit too. The AC is pushing into. So there you have it. This came bay. This is my particular, or particularly a Biscayne Bay bonefish fly. Our bonefish are much larger here than other parts of the world, so we throw bigger flies. But this same pattern, I just changed the color up for a variety of fish. Like I said, I've caught, I mean, I've caught everything. I've caught bonefish, redfish, tarpon, uh, black drum, and freaking brown trout on this same pattern. I'm gonna trim the weed guard so that it's right just past the tip of the hook. See is right there. Anything coming by, it'll just flow right over it. And you see that that Cortland 50 is nice. Ties really good knots and it's stiff enough. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share. And check out the links in the description below.